All right. So I really like work trucks and uh, playing with them. I think they're a lot of fun. And this is an old one. This is a number 47 DAF Tipper container truck. It's Matchbox. And it was made between 1969 and 1973. Um, it's missing a, a part. It actually comes covered. I'll show you a picture here. I found a picture online of it. I'm going to have to make that. And the axles are all borked. Major problems with that. Uh, the wheels are not in bad shape, though. They need to be cleaned up and, and uh, chromed up. I think we'll be able to reuse them. I think we'll be able to reuse most of these parts. Looks in actually pretty decent shape. Uh, but we're going to make it look as good as new as possible. It's cool how it, how it tips back. That's going to be fun to play with. Um, anyway, let's get this guy apart. Uh, it looks like it's a lot more complex than what I'm used to. So that's going to make this fun. Yeah, we'll just have to make new axles. Not a big deal. Hopefully. <laughs> now this is, I've never seen this before. There's a little plastic piece keeping this in. Hmm. Let's take this, let's be careful with this. Don't want to break the plastic pieces like I did last time. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to do this off camera. Because I do not want to break this. But, let's look at this. Let's see. That is dirty and scratched up, but I think this is completely salvageable. That looks like it's in actually really good shape. Got a pin right here. So I think the best thing to do is going to be to grind down this end of it. Should just fall out now. There we go. Alright, there's a little piece of steel. Right there. No, that's plastic. That's not steel. Huh. So I'm going to need to get that out. Let's slide. Oh yeah. Just slide all the way down. It's an important piece. Don't want to lose that. Alright. I'm just going to strip these metal pieces and then start working on these plastic pieces. I still need to get this off. I do not like working with plastic, but it's part of this hobby sometimes. Well, I almost made a mistake. So I was about to throw this in the stripper tank, but then I thought, you know, I should probably get this color matched. I thought that this uh, this Createc, uh color, um, Wicked Golden Yellow, would be a good match, but it's not. It's way too, way too orange. So I'm going to have to mix up my own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start mixing. I'm going to put little dots of paint in here until I can get a close match. And then I'll mix up a bunch of that, save it for uh, this when I spray this. That way we can get as close of the color as possible. I don't need to worry about too much. Even if you look here, it's hard to tell on camera. But if you look closely, maybe you can see it. It's actually not the same color. It's faded at the top more than it is at the bottom. So and it's definitely this is definitely a different color than the sides. You see, is that see that is actually getting closer. Hmm. Um, so I'm not too worried about getting the exact color because we don't know what this exact color was. At least I don't, because it's faded over time. But we're going to try and get closer than just slapping this color on. All right. So I've got something that's that's pretty close here. Definitely, I think, close enough for what we need. In fact, with my poor eyesight, I can't tell the difference. That's pretty close. Pretty close match there. So that'll be good. Definitely good enough. So now we can put it in the stripper tank.
my life is unpredictable. I might paint this tomorrow, or I might paint it in two weeks. So I always use these little containers just to seal up my pre-mixed paint. They work well. So it was a little scary, but it did just come out. This plastic is pretty brittle. It would have been very easy for those little tabs to break, but they didn't. Look how grody those wheels are. Ooh. I like seeing things like this because you know they've been played with, and I like toys that have been played with, but ugh. So all of these plastic parts, all the wheels, everything's going to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. So my axle mimicking machine does quite well with large axles, but these little thin ones, I have trouble dialing in, so it usually takes a couple tries for me to get it to make the ones uh, that I like perfectly. But when it finally gets dialed down, it works really well. Yeah. Fun to use too. So the paint came off the silver really well, but it seems like yellow always struggles. So I'm going to have to go in these corners with a pick and get a little bit of yellow off of this and then it'll be totally stripped and ready to be primed and painted. Uh, this is this is coming right along. It's coming really well. So I got most of it off. Uh, the reality is is that if you're gonna prime these you don't need to get every little speck of paint off. I'm gonna prime this. I like doing it because it looks impressive for the videos uh, but the realities of life is that a little speck of paint in the corners you're not gonna notice it uh, in the final product. So I can tell already that this bar that makes the the bed go up and down is going to be a problem because I had to grind off one end. Normally I'd use a ball peen hammer and hammer that down so it would stay in but look there's no room I can't get anything in there. So I'm gonna to have to come up with something else and what I've come up with is one of these little beads that my daughter uses I'll fit pretty well in there. I can glue that on, but I'm going to have to trim this down. It'll be just slightly larger than the axle. So uh, I'm going to do that now. Yeah, I'll make it a little bit more round in a second off camera. The trick is going to be gluing that on without gluing the bed shut. But uh, that's a problem for later me. There's a real cold snap in my area, so I'm not going to be able to airbrush because I do that with an open window. So while I'm waiting for that, I might as well chrome up this, get as much done, so that when I finally am able to airbrush, we can about be done with this project. So I haven't opened up one of these blind bags in a while. Let's see what we got here. All right, that's pretty cool. Plastic shell, metal base. Yeah, I actually pulled out a track. I had some of my nieces and nephews visiting. We made a track that went across the whole house. And it's these style, the lower profile, and these newer with the larger wheels actually did really well on that track. Anyway, not one I'm probably going to display, but uh, still pretty cool. Yeah, it uh, rolls really well. And the sticker is... Eh, it's a sticker. Not my favorite one. So I started having a lot of problems with my axle machine. It just wasn't doing well on this thin wire, so I ended up going with beads for the last couple ones. Um, don't really like that as much. But uh, it's okay. They look nice, especially from any distance at all. You're seeing it zoomed in. Any distance at all, you can't tell. It blends right in. All right, so like I showed you, this top originally, uh, this piece originally had a top on it. So I 3D printed one. And thankfully, I was able to find an STL for this, which made it a lot easier. I didn't have to, to make it myself. And man, that looks good. Of course, I'm going to have to paint it. Um, Matchbox cars have a much better community of 3D printed parts. Uh, Hot Wheels, you got to make them yourself. It's almost impossible to find the parts that you need. 
uh, these older Matchbox, you can almost always find someone that's already made the parts that are commonly broken or missing. So it's, it's awesome. If you're into restoring Matchbox, then having a 3D printer can save you a lot of time and money. It took me like an hour and 30 minutes to print this out. Yeah, it looks great. Look, look at the detail. It just did a really good job. So I'd like to point out how shallow that post is. So I drilled it in. I hopefully, hopefully I drilled it deep enough that the screw can bite. Uh, now this one's no problem. But man, I was really worried I was going to go through on this other side because that would have been really noticeable. I didn't. But like I said, I don't know if that's going to be enough for the screw to bite. Hmm. I think so, but it's going to be close. I'm old school. I still dip my windshields in pledge. I know there's other products now. Here's all the pieces. I think they're all ready. Now we just need to put them together. I had to take a few days off from doing this because I'm in grad school and I had a big project due. But I've been anxious to work on this. So let's get this together. So I think I might have forgotten to tell you about my paint plan. Ugh. I've had to do this project in so many little pieces, I can't remember. But uh, what I ended up doing is I painted this a Steinle Res Gray for a primer and then a Createx Silver over top of it. I used the yellow that we created at the beginning of this project for this over a white primer. It actually took a lot of tries. It didn't work very well. And then this is just a gray primer over top of the uh, 3D printed part up there. So it's a pretty simple paint job. It didn't go well, um, but that was mostly mistakes of my own. All right, so uh, this looks pretty good. I like it much better than uh, it did before. And uh, these hot, these um, not Hot Wheels, these Matchbox are really fun to work with. Actually, I I prefer to work on the Matchbox than I do on the Hot Wheels, but uh, the Hot Wheels are just so much easier to get the parts and and the stuff for in uh, where I live. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for your patience as it took a little while for it to get out, but uh, that's how it works sometimes. And I hope to see you in my next video, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Goodbye. <laughs>